Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Uh, I just realized when I turned on my camera that I forgot to take down <laughs> my fall Halloween wreath, as you can see right here. I, or I think I ordered it last year. I feel like it's kind of distracting from the video, but you know what? I don't care. It's pretty. I also changed my pillow covers to this, and then I have my yellow mums and my pumpkins out here. So we are like on the front porch of fall out here. And um, I actually, I know I say this a lot over here. I actually had no intention of filming a vlog today. Um, I just, I, I filmed a drama video yesterday to post today and we were going to Alex's aunt's house because she was having like this welcome to fall party <laughs> and I'm laughing because Alex was like fall was like a month ago <laughs> it started a month ago but anyway but it was really fun it was just family it was um Alex and myself Alex's aunt and uncle um Alex's mom Alex's cousin and grandma and then Liliana and Carlos because the kids were doing some Halloween trick-or-treating thing at some park or something like that so they couldn't come and then Carlos had to leave early because he had a baseball game because um, he plays in like this league and then Liliana stayed and she left when we left. So we had a really good time. Um, Alex's uncle is such a fantastic cook and um, I mean like an amazing cook. And so he grilled out for them and made like brats and cheeseburgers and stuff like that. But then he had like a whole like charcuterie tray with cheese and stuffed olives that he did himself and pumpkin bread that he made himself. And then he made me very gourmet because he knows I'm a vegetarian. Um, like everybody in the family is always so sweet and so aware of my vegetarianism. And so they always make sure that there's like another meal there for me, which I think is so sweet. And so he made, well, he made it for everybody, but it was like primarily for me, but he made enough for everybody. He made a huge thing of homemade tomato bisque soup and then homemade like gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches with cheese that he, he everything that he got to cook tonight um, for every, all the ingredients for the pumpkin bread to the olives to heat the charcuterie board to the tomato bisque soup to the grilled cheese the cheese and the grilled cheeses and the bread and everything all came from this it's I think it's called Wilson's farm and it's interesting because he was like tell me about it and um my cousin Caroline had said something about going there and it sounded so familiar to me and I actually I think I did it in a vlog. I think I showed it on a vlog and then I think I also showed it like in a review or a Peter Does Stuff video, the things I bought there. But do you guys remember like one day I was like driving out in the cornfields and stuff and I was looking for this place and then I ended up going there. That, that It's either called Wilson's Farm or Miller's Farm, but I think it's called Wilson's Farm. And they had like um, a lot of food from Amish farms in Indiana. Northern Indiana has like a lot of um, Amish like farms and um, they bring their goods down to some of these like smaller places and stuff like that here. Um, and like Mennonite farms and things like that. And so everything in there is fresh. Like all their pies are homemade, all their cookies and breads. Do you guys remember this? I went there. I filmed like inside the store and everything. They had a little deli in the very back that was like fried chicken and stuff like that. So everything that he had today was from this Wilson's farm, which I thought was really cool. Um, so yeah, so we were... Our plan was to go over there, which we did. We got kind of a little bit of a late start, but um, that was our plan to go over there and just kind of hang out there the rest of the day. And honestly, I didn't know what time I would get home. So I was like, if I get home too late, I'm not going to film a vlog. Here's the thing. <laughs> um, I feel like I talk about like my filming schedule so much over here that it's probably getting like really boring. I feel like my face looks really heavy today. I don't know why. Um, I just took all these pictures outside of myself in this new coat. I don't know how to pronounce this brand. Coat Epoxy, is that how you pronounce it? So when we were in Minnesota in the airport, they had this really cool store there. It's called like Northern Minnesota or stuff. And they had like Patagonia, North Face. They had like all these different brands. And this was one of the brands. Well, I'd obviously heard of it before, right? And so I went through their website. Now, I've already bought enough coats for this year. So I, But I ended up buying this coat. Let me just show it to you. Like... The full coat. Is this not so cute? I just put it on. It literally was on our doorstep when we came home. Um, 
And Alex is like, I really, really like the colors. I mean, it was so hard for me to pick exactly what colors I want, but I just want to tell you. So this is an extra large, and it is like almost a little big, and it's like perfect fitting for me. Which is so strange, because for so long, I was thinking about this the other day, it's like I always think to myself I've lost 30 pounds, but actually since the accident, I've lost about 65, almost 70 pounds. Which is crazy when you think about it, you know? Like I've lost that much weight. I was watching um, some video that somebody had posted of something to do with me, and it was like way before, it was like a, like a year before the accident, and my face was so heavy. I mean, I'm still heavy, you know? I'm, I still have a good 20 or 30 pounds to lose. I mean, to get to my, like, what is supposed to be my weight and my BMI, I, I think it's like between 160 and 170, and I'm, oh, I'm like over 200 pounds still, you know? And so I have, you know, 30 to 40 pounds, 35 to 45 pounds to still lose which when I tell my friends that they're like like I walked in today and um Alex's grandma was like oh my god he's lost so much weight he looks so thin they all told me that for the wedding and stuff too um and it makes me so happy because <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not but like in a, like Latino families too somebody's like walking at my is that my neighbor Oh my god, you scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I, I just saw him. Oh my god. Putting out the Halloween pillows, huh? Uh, they were already up there. Boo Radley was barking at him. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> so, my neighbor was like in the garage. <laughs> He's like putting these Halloween pillows out. So I can see the shadows, because I don't know if you can see, but like, so the sun, so when I'm sitting here, I can see, let me point to it, the edge of the driveway right there, I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about, I can see the edge of the driveway, do you see? So when somebody walks up, I can see the shadows of somebody walking up there from during, during the day, at night, because of all the lights that our neighbors have on either side and the lights that we have, because we have like these flood lights that go on. So when I'm sitting out here and I'm watching a show late at night, you can't see it. Like, if I'm filming out here late at night, you can't see it because it doesn't come up this far. But, like, if an animal, <laughs> like, there's stray cats and, you know, all kinds of squirrels and stuff. If any animal comes out late at night, those lights go off like that. And I'm up here late enough <laughs> that he gets up with the dog and takes the dog out at about 4.30 or 5. And he'll be like, hey, how are you? Good morning. I'm like, good morning. And um, and so, like, the lights go up. And that's when I know that he's coming out to walk the dog. But anyway, I could see somebody. But it looked like, I can usually kind of tell when they're, like, going up their walk. It looked like they were coming up, like, the edge of my driveway. And then they just, like, stopped. Like, right by my garage door. And what's so funny is that we uh, just took Boo Radley out. Alex took him out. And then I came back out there because I'm going to take some pictures of my new coat and Boo Rowley thinks it's really funny too so like they have a bass and beagle hound and he's so sweet but like he's scared to death of his own shadow and so Boo Rowley goes out there and he runs after her and him and, and barks and goes crazy and stuff like that so we were like Boo Rowley stop Boo Rowley you gotta come inside come on and Boo Rowley just like looked at us and then he like arr, 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 and he kept on like barking at him and stuff like that he doesn't get a lot of social interaction, so, and they don't care at all, so as you could hear. So anyway, we brought Boo Radley in. Well, their dog was out back, so all of a sudden, I like, I turn around the corner, and they, they have like a, their front porch is sideways, so it's, and it's bigger than this, and so it goes in like that, and they have like these uh, rocking chairs out there and stuff, and um, so I just saw the dog, and I was like, at first I was like, did the, did the dog just come around by itself, like, uh, um, 
from the backyard to the front is just coming around by itself. And so then I saw him and he was putting the Halloween pillows out there. So, um, yeah, anyway. But, um, I, unless we got home early, I wasn't going to vlog today. And even, like, on the way home, I was, like, I started this vlog and it was, like, let's see what time it is right now. It's 6.25. And so I started this at about 6.15, because I've been doing this for 10 minutes now, or filming for 10 minutes now. I was, like, well, I could film a Peterson's video. Well, I have this stuff to review in the fridge that I got at Costco. I could do a review video. And I was, like, no. Like, you need to just sl slow it down a little bit, okay? If you're going to do a video, do, do a vlog. Because you always do all these other videos and you're too tired to vlog. So if you're going to do anything, do a vlog. Alex is like a s falling asleep. So here's what happened. So we got to his aunt and uncle's house. We all sat down and had lunch. Oh, Alex's aunt was over there. His other aunt was over there too. Um, she moved here from Venezuela like two years ago. So she was over there as well. So like they were all sitting outside I sat with his uncle inside and we were like catching up and stuff talking about the wedding and everything because they were all up there for the wedding as well and so and I was asking him about like what he was cooking that's when he was telling me about this Wilson's farm and stuff like that so afterwards like we went outside and we were like hanging out with him it's been a beautiful day like when Alex and I were coming home the temperature gauge in his car said 68 degrees let's see what it is I thought it was supposed to be like 50s today and um when we were going over there, I was like, oh, Alex, it's supposed to be, like, 77 this week. And he was like, what day? And I was like, I think Tuesday. And I looked, and I go, it's 71 right now. Yeah, it's 67. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a 67 and sunny right now. So I don't really need this coat. But it's kind of like, it's, do you hear that? It's really windy today. Oh, tonight it's supposed to get down to 43. And then tomorrow, this is so crazy, this Indiana weather. The high tomorrow is 58 degrees. Now Tuesday, it's gone from 77 to 75, but Wednesday, it's supposed to be 72. Oh, Thursday, 72. But, like, listen to this, okay? Halloween. Guess what the high is that day? 48. Does this say snow? Am I reading this correctly? That says a possibility of snow next week. Hold on a second. No rain showers. And then Tuesday on Halloween, 48. No, no snow yet. We had snow a couple years ago because, like, one of that was the memory that Caroline was talking about was when we were sitting on her patio. So anyway, after um, oh by the way, just a PS tangential in here. Isn't this coat so cute though? Like seriously, like it's kind of like it's it's very light and it would pack so easy, and it could also be like a raincoat because it's got this kind of like part on it. Um, oh and. The other thing I have to show you is <laughs> I bought this messenger bag too. I thought it would be like perfect for traveling because I thought that like my iPad and my computer could both fit in here and then it would easily sit underneath my seat. And when I went to go order this stuff, the coat and, well, I think it was one product was on sale and the coat was already on sale, but this was $60. But then it was like so much off and I ended up getting it for 40 or 48. And they have like they have this literally. I mean I had to go through like literally no, I'm not even lying 20 or 30 40 different colors. They have all these different kinds of color arrangements and the, what the material looks like. It's just not so cute. I think it's so cute. But I need to address the strap because the strap is way too long. Or is way too short. I like the straps like when they're as long as possible. That's not working. It's bunching up the bag. Well, I'm gonna have to figure this out later. But I love this so much. And when I was looking, when I was cleaning out my closet, I realized I have a fanny pack that looks. Do you see what this just happened when I did that? I have a fanny pack that looks very, very similar to this. That I've never used. It still has the tags on it. Is that not crazy? That's why it's important to go through your closet every once in a while, I guess. Do you hear I'm still kind of losing my voice? So look at this inside. I'm gonna have to, I don't know how I'm gonna fix this now. Oh, there I did it. Hold on a second. How entertaining watching Peter not be able to figure out how to work the straps on a bag. This is the kind of stuff I am not good at at all. I 
how did I just do the other side? You know, see, now it just keeps on bunching up like that. The other side did not do that. The only reason I'm wanting to take it out now is so I can show you guys what it looks like. Oh, no, I did do it on the other side. This is where I throw it to Alex. I'm like, can you just do this for me? Because I cannot figure it out. He fixes it. He's like, and does it like in two seconds. This is where I'm a complete idiot about these things. Okay. So this is what the bag looks like all pulled out. Now when you open it, I love inside pockets to anything. I feel like I need to pull this down a little bit. I love inside pockets to anything. Okay, so this is like, it's huge inside. I don't know if you can see this, okay? But then, it has this little pocket right here. Okay, where you can put like a book or something like that. And then, you see how big this inside pocket is? And then in that inside pocket, gets me every time, there's a zippered pocket. I love an inside zippered pocket, okay? And, and this is not sponsored, I ordered this stuff. And on the outside, there is a huge, what is this, is this a sticker? No. On the outside, there is a huge zipper pocket too. This is like perfect, I love this. When I ordered it, Alex was like, you're not gonna order this. So this is just the convertible tote. And it's for men or women. Gear for good. What is this already? Does that mean it's recy from recycled materials? Code Epoxy's creed, do good, touches every aspect of our company, from our giving model to our company's culture and sustainable product design. We see our business as a vehicle for sustainable impact. And as, as a, I didn't know any of this about this company. As a certified B Corporation, we put 1% of our profits towards addressing poverty and supporting community development through the Code Code Epoxy Foundation. We support organizations successfully improving the human condition. Learn more about our work at CodeEpoxy.com. Am I mispronouncing it? I probably am. Made, and then it says, has this big, and it says, made with repurpose. All products in our repurpose collection are made with repurpose fabric. Oh, wow. The process, the process is simple. We take high quality remnant nylon fabric left over from other companies, large production runs, and use it to create limited edition, one of a kind products. Repurpose. It's like purpose, but then it has like re, like, in parentheses. All these are like arrows, but, um, repurpose keeps fabric out of the landfill, putting it in the hands of thoughtful adventurers like you. Learn more at codepoxy.com. The Do Good Llama. Oh, it's a sticker. Wear it loud and proud wherever you roam. Be careful when peeling. If you can see it on here, but it's like, you can't really see it, but it's like a, it's a llama, but like you just take it off and it's a picture of a llama. Good supply. Impact starts with how we operate. That means taking into account ethics during every... You know what? I'm just going to talk about that. I'm going to do a, a review video of this. I'm really, really impressed with these products. So, And then I'll show my... Uh, my what do you call it? Do you hear how windy this is? It's crazy. And it was so windy yesterday and then out of nowhere it just stopped. And then I'll show my fanny pack as well. And I think I might order something else from there. I might order some of their clothes, because they have really cute stuff. I actually, I was so impressed with my outfit today. I got to just go into my closet and pick something out cute. So I wore these jeans. I don't know if you can see them or not, but these jeans have like holes all over them. I have a couple pairs of these jeans. And then I wore my favorite pair of Birkenstock clogs, which are just these leather Birkenstock clogs that I love so much. I bought them a couple years ago. My favorites. And then I have this denim shirt. I actually bought these we don't need it that much. Like when you're like up and moving around, it's it's not it's fine. But like just sit here, it's too much, right? I actually got these at Kohl's. I got a I got like two flannel shirts and this denim shirt, and I got them last like Christmas time, and they were super cheap at Kohl's. They were like twenty bucks or something like that, which I think is is cheap for a shirt. They are so well made, you guys. And um, I don't know what the brand is. Something at Kohl's though. I don't know if I can even see if I. What does that say? Can you see? I can't see. Hold on a second. <laughs> Am I really going to take a picture of this tag? This is so silly. Okay. Where is the tag? We don't need to show any nudity on here. Okay.
Did I show any nudity? Okay, I didn't. So now my brand. I wonder why this was so this was so baggy. This is actually 2XL. I was like, why is this shirt so baggy on me? It's a 2XL. But this is like the, one of the only 2XL things I kept. I didn't even realize this shirt was 2XL. It's so baggy in my stomach, you guys. Like, I just took this picture of me. I, I thought it was so cute today. I was like, well, that's a cute outfit. So anyway, um, I feel like I'm so all, all over the place. By the way, I want to drink some of this coffee, so I'm just going to tell you about this coffee real quick, okay? This is all over the place. I already know it. So for those of you out there, like my friend Valerie, she'll be like, you're all over the place in your vlog today. Hey, Valerie. <laughs> Read between the lines. <laughs> That's the kind of relationship Valerie and I have. She actually was messaging me earlier. Um, oh, this is good. Okay, so I'm almost out of the pumpkin spice. Starbucks K-Pods. I have so many K-Pods in the garage I have ordered in the last year. Like for Christmas last year. I know you guys are probably like, ooh, that's bad. No, it's coffee. Okay, and they're in K-Pods. It's They're totally fine. So I was going into the garage and I was looking for it. Well, I have all this these tea... I have so many TK pods that I've purchased. I'm now probably drinking more hot coffee, and I love these Turbis cups. I've been using a lot of, like, my ceramic cups and stuff like that, but they just, like, the coffee doesn't stay warm in them very often, or very, very long. These Turbis plastic cups, which you can probably find, like, dupes for it on Amazon, they're expensive, I will tell you that. They're, like, these are, like, $30 a cup or something like that, but they are so worth it. Um, I mean, coffee stays out here in the cold with my heated vest on. The coffee stays piping hot for like a half an hour so but when I was in the garage I found this box that I purchased from Amazon and it was six boxes inside 10 K pods in each box and it was like a variety pack of fall flavors for Starbucks K pods and I was like because I had this huge box where I ordered like I think it was like 48 something I think I'm almost positive it was 48 um, of the blonde Verona, Verona, Verena, whatever it's called, <laughs> flavor. Like I love that flavor, but um, I was like, you know, I want something. I like when it gets fall and winter. I like a little bit more flavor, you know, to my coffee. So, um, I look through there, and it's like I have a box of vanilla. I haven't opened those yet. This is actually caramel. That's one of the reasons why I got it. Um, and it's still like a really rich coffee. I'm noticing that the that this year, like I really like, and I like I said, I like the blonde roast. But I've noticed, like especially with the iced coffee, but even more with like the hot coffee, I'm noticing that I I like a stronger, darker, richer coffee. If that makes sense, I almost kind of like my favorite coffee. Honestly, my favorite coffee in life is just gas station regular coffee with no sweetener in it. Um, I love it so much. I have been putting some creamer on this because I bought those creamers that I reviewed. So like late at night, like I'll like like I okay. So I got cinnamon dolce was one of the the flavors that I got, and so I put the cinnamon creamer, the oat milk. I think it's oat milk or almond creamer in there. It's from the brand Nut Pod. I reviewed it on my channel, and then there was hazelnut, hazelnut toffee nut, toasted graham, which I've had before. That was like one of my favorite flavors as well. There were six flavors in there. Vanilla, hazelnut, toffee nut, toasted graham, cinnamon, caramel. Those are that. So I put those in the drawer as well because I'm almost out of the pumpkin spice. But like I've had so much pumpkin spice this month and last month that I'm kind of over it anyway. So anyway, I just wanted to say that because I wanted to drink some of my coffee before it got cold. So I made it specifically to sit out here. And, and drink a cup of coffee and have a conversation with you guys. Give me my thumbnail. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so we went over to Alex's aunt's, ha aunt's and uncle's house, had a great lunch, it was fantastic. So then they were all outside talking, and Alex's um, uncle. He was like, I want to watch the new um, My Big Fat Greek Wedding movie. Now, I don't think I've even seen the first one, but I remember when it came out, because I was like, probably, I should probably look. 
I was I would think I was like in my 20s or something like that. Let's look it up and see. I remember when it came out because I don't. I've never seen the movie. I don't think, but which is crazy. But it was such a huge deal. And do you remember that woman that she's like the main character? Tula is her name in the movies, and she ends up. Oh, here comes my favorite neighbors. There they are, my favorite neighbors. What do you think of this weather? Okay, and it's supposed to be like 71 tomorrow, 77 or 77 on Tuesday, and then like 56 on Thursday and Friday. You guys are all dressed up for winter. <laughs> oh, thank you. What do you think about my pillowcases? Do they go well? I'm trying really hard. I'm trying to make the landscaping manager very happy. The landscaping manager of the community, I'm trying to make her happy. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Oh. Have a good walk, you guys. You guys, I am really missing the pool. Can I just tell you? I was talking to Alex's uncle because he goes to the pool a lot, too, in the summer. And so, we used to talk about how, like, we would go up there every day in the summer. And he was like, yeah. But their neighborhood is not, like, all older people. It's, like, a mix. And it's actually, like, a lot of younger people. And he's like, yeah. I met a lot of parents that bring up their kids and stuff like that. And I talk to them and whatever. And he's like, it's like, I, I go up there, like, every day. And so, I said to him, like, how many times did you go up to the pool this year? He's like, I don't even know. He was like, not, I don't, he, like, he didn't go up to the pool hardly at all this summer and like all the summers before he went up to the summer like that we used to talk about that because he would go up there like every single day in the summer so anyway I was telling him I was like I really miss like going to the pool but like what I really miss is making my big iced coffee and my um you know my venti uh cup iced coffee cup from Starbucks carrying it up to the pool sitting in the shallow end talking to my ladies but I met a lot of the husbands this summer, too. That was really kind of nice, too. Just, like, meeting a lot of the couples that live in the neighborhood. She was up at the pool. But I, I, I know them from, like, walking around talking and stuff like that. So, anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because, especially since it's, like, older people in my neighborhood, a lot of people in the fall and the winter, like, they all have, like, like I, I've heard even people talking about it in the street and stuff, like, when I'm sitting here. Like, a lot of them have, like, winter homes in Arizona or Florida or North Carolina or South Carolina and places like that that they go to, some in Mexico, and that they go to in the winter. So I would say like a third of the people in this neighborhood um, maybe not that many. And I feel like it's not all at one time, but like some people go away for a couple weeks, they come back, you know, things like that. Except for them villages people. <laughs> They're gone for a year. Their nephew is, you guys want to know some HOA drama? So the guy that I met that he was bragging about his place of the villages in Florida. So they went for a year and their nephew moved in to their condo and is like subletting their condo apparently, even though they own the condo. But that's like a big no-no. You're not allowed to do that, which I didn't know. Like Alex and I always talked about like, we would maybe like Airbnb this place if we ever, um, if you ever, if we like if we ever like got a place like in Florida or somewhere else like that we would go back and forth you know <coughs> apparently <coughs> you used to be able to do that because they were talking about like when the Super Bowl was here because we're so close like where we live is like so centrally located like we're 50, 10 or 15 minutes from the north side we're right in the middle of central Indianapolis. We're 10 or 15 minutes from downtown. Who is texting me? We're 10 or 15 minutes from downtown. So we're really close to everything, if that makes sense. And so um, at the pool one day, we were all talking about how, like, we could have, like, you know, rented out our condos for people to come here and stay. And we could have, like, made a ton of money. Because people, like, rented out their houses in Indianapolis, I mean, for the Super Bowl, and made, like, a shit ton of money. So, um, oh, my God. Constant text messages. Okay. So, my big fat Greek wedding. But anyway, I miss my people at the pool. It was so fun this summer. My big fat Greek wedding one 
year. I think like this is gonna stop. It's gonna stop in like eight seconds. Hold on. Okay. I honestly thought I was gonna only vlog for like. Okay, so it came out in 2002. So I was 30, right? Came out August of 2002 because I was born in 72. This is how bad I am at math, you guys. It was my 30th birthday when it came out. Okay, 30th year. I feel like I, I thought it came out when I was like younger than that. But anyway, I didn't watch any of those movies, but I did like, I love that woman. She was in Connie and Carla, Carla and Connie, or Connie and Carla, do you guys remember that movie? I love that movie. About the, the women that act like they're drag queens. She's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, what is her name? I didn't know that Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson like were the producers of this show. Is she? Is it? No. Joy Fatone was in the third one. So it was. So anyway, Alex's uncle wanted to watch this movie, so he rented. I guess she had to rent it, so he rented the movie. Well, it was like two or three minutes into the movie, five minutes into the movie or something like that. They made it to Greece. They got to Greece like real quick. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, he's like sitting in the recliner. I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, what's going on? And he was like, what do you mean? And I go, what did I miss? I go, it's only been on for five minutes. And he goes, well, you were on your phone. <laughs> I go, I know I was on my phone, but what happened? And he's like, well, they're going to this family reunion in Greece. Um, the mother's not going because she has, like, dementia. And the father's passed away. So they're taking this journal that he started when he came to America. They're taking it over to his, like, best friends that live in Greece. I was like, okay. So he's like, I'm just going to rewind it. We can start it from the beginning. He goes, you know, like, I don't know if anybody else wants to watch it or not. So I went outside where they were all sitting at the table. And I didn't say my big fat Greek wedding. I looked at my mother-in-law and I go, oh, we're all gonna watch, we're gonna watch Mamma Mia inside. Big mistake, okay? Mamma Mia is literally my mother-in-law's favorite movie of life. She loves that movie, okay? She's like, we're watching Mamma Mia! So she like jumps up. Well, then Alex and Jackie jumps up. Alex is like, well, I'm gonna go inside. Liliana's like, I'm gonna go inside and all this kind of stuff. So everybody like, Alex's uncle looked at me. He was like, what did you do? Like, I'm trying to watch this movie, okay? So there's people in the kitchen. They're talking, you know, like it's like Alex's um, aunt and his grandma are like talking at full blast in the kitchen. I'm sitting next to Liliana, who's sitting next to Alex, okay? They're showing each other stuff on their phones, all right? And then Alex's other cousin is like full out asleep on the couch, okay? Then his mom comes over and she's talking to them really loud. And like Alex's uncle is like, looks like he's about to lose it, right? And I'm like this, trying to listen to this movie. <laughs> Cause we got talking over here, we got talking over here. It was so fun though. Like this is the stuff that I missed out on growing up as a kid, as an only child with an aunt and uncle and an only child cousin because our Christmas is Thanksgiving. I mean, they were not like this. They were so small. And it's always like this. There's always, like, somebody doing a craft, somebody cooking in the kitchen, somebody cleaning up, somebody making coffee, somebody dancing, singing, somebody showing us something. Like, his cousin was making bracelets earlier, and she was showing us how to make these bracelets, these beaded bracelets. I mean, somebody always starts a movie. They're like, we're going to start this movie. You want to watch it? I remember one Christmas when Carlos, this was before he and Liliana lived here. I think it was, like, the Christmas before they moved here. Oh, maybe it was like two Christmases because it was Carlitos is 10. It must have been like three three or four years before they moved here because he's 10 now. Oh, he's about to be 11. I don't know. I don't know when it was, but it doesn't matter. But anyway, so they brought Carlitos here when he was like one years old. Alex's mom and everybody had already gone to Venezuela to um, to like meet, well, I think she was there when Carlitos was born actually. Um, and she spent some time down there in Venezuela with Liliana and Carlos when Carlitos was born. And Alex's grandma lived there at the time and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, and they didn't know at that time that they were gonna move to, to the United States. So Alex, Alex, and, Fufu were the only two, other than like his cousin Maya, that hadn't gone and seen um, Carlitos yet. So that was like our first Christmas spending, well I think that was Thanksgiving when they came. 
No. Maybe it was like two weeks before Christmas because I can remember the first night. No, it must have been Thanksgiving when they came here. I could look up the picture and tell you guys when it is. This is so funny. I still have the pictures on my phone. Well, why wouldn't you, right? Um, bum, 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 bum. So funny because I always say to Sebastian, I'm like, do you know who your godfather is? And he's like, mm-hmm, you. And he goes, and that means you have to buy me everything that I want when I get older. I go, you're getting smarter the older you get, but no, that's not what it means. And I look at um, Carlitos and I go, do you know who your godfather is? And he goes, yeah, not you, and you don't get to buy me anything. <laughs> They're such smart asses. No. They are really good kids. And I'll tell you what I love about them so much is that Carlitos is so protective of Sebastian. And they are literally like the best friends. Like, the best of friends. Like, on this entire trip, I thought I saw them, and they were both really, really tired. Like, it had been a really long day. They kind of started, like, arguing a little bit with each other. But, like, it was very, like, it ended very quickly. Um, maybe twice it happened on the trip. But, like, they, are, they play together. They're, like, constantly, like, playing games on their tablets together, watching movies together, talking to each other. I mean, they're such good friends. And I love that two siblings are such good friends. I hope that they never grow out of that. Okay, I have to look and see when this was that he first came here, when they brought him over here. Hold on a second. Let me through all these old pictures that I have. What is this? My gosh. Here it is. Oh my God. Okay, so here was the night. So it was, oh, it was Thanksgiving because it was November 25th of 2013. Oh, that was 10 years ago that they came here to visit. And, um... I won't show the picture of Carlitos. But you can see, here's Fufu. And he's, like, right behind him as he's walking through the hallway. And here's Alex on the side. And that was the first time that we had met Carlitos. So 10 years ago was when we met him. And he's gonna be 11. So he was, like, at this point, like, 11 months old when he came. Um, why was I talking about this? Oh, this is what I remember. So Alex at the time was really, really into, I believe the TV show was Breaking Bad. Was that out then? If it wasn't Breaking Bad, it was some other TV show like that. Like, it wasn't The Walking Dead because they're all, all of them are afraid of zombies except for Fufu because zombies are real in South America in case you didn't know. So anyway, no, like really, okay? Like, it was so weird because I was watching this thing, um, on Love After Lockup and this woman is marrying this guy from Ecuador, and she's a witch. And she's constantly talking about how he has to respect her and stuff like that. I'm like, this is going to be real interesting how this goes over, because I know how my family believes in this kind of stuff, right? Like, they really believe in, like, witchcraft and all this kind of stuff. And that it's, like, not... I mean, most Venezuelans are Catholic, right? So... And a lot of Latino people are Catholic in South American countries, in Central American countries. And so I was like, this is going to be interesting. She hadn't told him, really, what she did as a living. And so he's looking at her, and she's, like, saging the house and stuff, and she's like, I'm a bruja. And, which I think translates to witch. And so I was asking Alex, and he's like, yeah, that wouldn't fly. And he's like, like, that, like, like, that's kind of an insult to say to somebody, like, you were raised by witches or you have witches in your family or something at least from my, from my family from how I've interacted with them um like tarot cards and stuff like that like they go to people like they take that stuff very seriously like they really 100% believe in it um and so like for somebody just to throw that kind of around you know how people like they go buy a deck of uh, like I did when I was in high school they go buy a deck of you know tarot cards from um what do you call it, from like the bookstore, like B. Dalton, where Walden Books aren't even around anymore. When did those close down, by the way? <laughs> like, all of a sudden it was just like Borders, which is closed down now, and then Barnes and Noble. And like B. Dalton like closed down, and Walden Books. Like those were, I don't even remember them closing down. That must have been my not reading phase, which was never, so I don't know when that happened. I don't remember that ever happening. But anyway, like they, I mean, if you bought crystals and said I'm a witch, and, and lit some incense, they would be like, no, that's not cute. Like we don't joke about that kind of stuff. So anyway, I mean, this vlog is, like, literally, you guys, all over the place. I don't even know what I was looking up now. Oh, so, I think it was Breaking Bad. 
that Alex got... Like, Alex was watching, like, the third episode of season one or something like that. I should look this up and see when Breaking Bad came out. Hold on a second. Let's see if I'm right about this. Breaking Bad years. Breaking Bad aired five seasons from 2008 to 2013, which is when it would have ended. So, I feel like Alex went back and started watching it from season one. He was, like, on episode three or something at the time that we were over there. And we were spending, like, literally, like, eight to ten hours a day over there at his mom's house. Everybody was there. And so, like, people, I would just fall asleep on the couch or I would go home and take care of the dogs and then come back over there. And people would, like, still be watching movies. People were watching movies in Fufu's bedroom, like four cousins all hanging out together watching movies and stuff like that. I had never, like, I know this is going to sound crazy, but that look took a lot of adjusting for me. Because I was, like, used to going to my aunt and uncle's house. Well, like, on weekends when I was younger, we would stay there. But as I got older, it was like, okay, Christmas Eve, Thanksgiving, show up, have a cocktail hour for half an hour, an hour. How are you doing? How's school? How's work? All that kind of stuff. Then sit down, have dinner. Dinner's very quick. Clean up dinner, have dessert, have coffee, go home. It was not a lot of this lingering around stuff. That's not how it is with Alex's family. And, and I don't even know that I think that's just a Latino thing. I think it's a big family thing. And so I was never used to that. It took me a lot of adjusting, you know? I'd be like, are we leaving? Like, what time are we leaving? You know, like, it made me nervous. It's something that I love now, but it took me a long time to get used to. And so um, I remember that year, Alex, like, started Breaking Bad. He was watching, like, episode three. And Carlos sat down and watched it with him. Because I can see his mom doesn't have the same setup at her house anymore. But she had the couch. And the couch faced the wall. Then they had this big screen TV up there. And then behind it was, like, where the dining room table was in the kitchen. And I can just see their three heads. It was, like, Car Alex, Carlos, and Fufu, like, just sitting there. Because Carlos started watching the episode with Alex. So then he was, like, Alex was, like, do you want me to start the season over? They literally sat there and watched season after season. I mean, I don't think Alex left his mom's house for like three or four days. I, they just like watched like literally every episode. But I remember when they came, you know what, That why that's November 25th that year probably? When was, hold on a second, when was Thanksgiving 2013? It, isn't it always on the 24th? One second. Thanksgiving 2013. Day and date. November 28th. Okay, that would make sense because most of Alex's cousins already lived here. And I remember that... Oh, no, no, no. That's why there were so many people at the house. Because Alex's cousins, husband and wife, and their two sons had moved in with Alex's mom. So those four were there too. And then Carlos and Liliana came with Carlitos. Alex's grandma was staying there at the same time, too. It was a lot of people. So fun. Um, Alex's cousin Maya was in town staying at her mom's house, but she was, like, over there a lot and stuff like that. It just was really fun. Alex's cousin Nina was in town. So, anyway, it just was really a fun time. And so they were watching that show. Everybody was, like, talking, dancing, all this kind of stuff. But I remember that for... Uh, Black Friday, after Thanksgiving, we had told everybody that we were going to go down to um, Edinburgh Outlet Mall to go shopping. And I remember it, like, we went at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning because that's when the stores opened. And and so we met Alex's husband and wife cousin down there that came with Carlos and Liliana. And Alex's mom watched the kids because they were asleep, obviously. But she stayed home and watched the kids. And so they came down there... Um, they, like, drove down there, and I feel like there was one other person with them. I can't remember who it would have been, though. I think it was Maya, actually, came down there, and we met them. And Alex and I went down there with Tanya, and I remember we stopped at, like, some gas station and got, like, pumpkin spice cappuccino lattes. And I remember Alex and I both had on, like, sweat shorts and Ugg boots because it was cold, but we wanted to be comfortable. We had such a fun night. Like, Tanya still brings it up. She's like, oh my god, that was so fun. We went down there for Black Friday with all of his family and stuff like that. Alex will not do Black Friday anymore. He thinks it's a waste of time. Um, so, I don't know, maybe I'll convince him this year to go do it. But this is the thing. Back in the day, like, the outlet, the Edinburgh Outlet Mall used to open 
at like two or three or four o'clock in the morning. And so I think it was like two o'clock, between like 12 and two, some of the stores opened. So you could go down there and you could shop from two to 6 a.m. And then the stores closed at like six or seven and then they reopened at like nine or 10 and just like set everything back up. And they would have DJs at like the Nike store and they had like people selling kettle corn on the street and caramel apples and stuff like that. And so you could like walk around the whole place. It was really fun. I remember it snowed that year too. So anyway, um, maybe I'll get Caroline to go this year. Maybe she would want to do that. Tiny Jean, she doesn't want to do the, the Black Friday shopping either. It's not even really about like buying a bunch of stuff. It's just like doing it, being, you know, part of all of that. But that was really fun. So we sat down tonight to watch this movie and it was cute. It was very cheesy, but it was cute. Um, so at the end, it ended up being Alex's uncle in the recliner, Alex's aunt, Jackie, sitting on the floor next to him with her, his, her arm up here. I was sitting on this edge of the couch. Alex's cousin was sitting next to me. Liliana was sitting next to me. Then Alex, then his mom. But then his mom moved to the couch and she fell dead asleep. Well, first she was on the floor with a pillow. Then she moved to the couch and she was dead asleep. This is what happens, okay? And then... Alex's cousin was over there first and she was dead asleep and then she came over and then she went into the kitchen and Alex's grandma was too tired so she went upstairs. Liliana went in the kitchen was on her phone and then we all finished the movie. It's like a big family. It was really fun. So yeah and then we came home and the movie was over at like 5.15 and um, so I had like my blood pressure medicine and my uh, thyroid medicine to pick up and obviously the uh, pharmacy's not open tomorrow so I was like and they closed at like 6 or 7 so I was like Alex can we please go by the pharmacy really quick and so he's like yeah so we left and then as soon as we were leaving Liliana was like well I'm gonna leave too so we left and it was such a really nice day so that's why I'm vlogging because I got home earlier than I thought I would and so I also was like and that's where I was like well if you're gonna vlog then you might as well do this but it's already starting to get dark you can see like where I showed you that the sun was out the sun is no longer out it doesn't show on camera how dark it really is, but it's like getting dark. What time is it right now? It's 7.02. So here within a half an hour, it'll be pitch black outside. So here's the deal. One of the reasons why I went to vlog today is... Oh, this is how I started the whole vlog, right? I... <laughs> I'm either like all in on filming or all out. I don't know if you guys have kind of figured that out, but like... <laughs> I either get up and I film, and when I start filming, I can't stop, right? Or, and I, I kind of feel like if I'm going to film, like, a review video, and the, a Peter Dusta video, and a drama video, then I feel like it's, it, I feel bad about not filming my vlog, right? Because this is the one that I feel like there's so many people that are so dedicated to watching this channel, like, every day and stuff like that, so, but by that time, I'm kind of tired, right? So I'm either all in, or I'm all out. Like, I'm either, like, I'm going to film four to six videos a day, or I'm not going to film any videos at all. But it's starting to get easy for me. I don't know why. I think because of being sick recently, it's starting to get easy for me to take an entire day off and not film anything at all. In fact, so many people have encouraged it in the comment sections and been like, Peter, I think it would be good for you to take a day off, blah, 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 whatever. A lot of people on my drama videos the last couple of days that are like, I think that like the comments are really getting to you and you're like really upset about these topics. I'm like, this is like talking to a girlfriend on the phone. Like, I, I know that people don't understand that because maybe they don't have a lot of people that get heated and passionate in their life and so it's kind of disturbing to them for me to get like so passionate about I mean I get this passionate talking about love after lockup <laughs> I mean I really do right so I mean I got that passionate today with my family when we were talking about stuff I was looking up uh, Venezuelan slang and asking them questions and um, we got like laughing so hard about some of this stuff so anyway um I was going to say something, but it's probably not appropriate for video. It's, I know it's not appropriate for video, so I won't say it. But anyway, um, so yeah, and so, like today, like as an example, when I was coming home and I was like, oh, we're going to get home not too late, I want to film my vlog, but then maybe I could also film a review video. I've got these, like, things I got at Costco in the refrigerator to film. Maybe I could do a Peter Dust stuff video. I was like, no, just vlog. Just be committed to doing your vlog. You already have a drama video up today. That's enough. And then tomorrow, I, my plan is this. My plan for Sunday is that 
because I think we're gonna maybe try to try somewhere new for brunch tomorrow. Maybe not, I don't know. But I think that, depending on how I feel afterwards, we'll probably go to the grocery store and stuff like that. Depending on how we feel, I feel afterwards. Like Alex always lays down and takes a nap on Sundays after brunch for like two or three hours. And I'm always kind of jealous because I'll come home and I'll film and then like I'll sit here and I'll watch some stuff on the phone, on the iPad and then I'll talk on the phone and then I'll look at stuff on the phone and whatever, right? So then by the time it's all done, said and done, it's like eight or nine and he's getting up and he wants to watch a show and I'm exhausted. So what I, my, what my gut is telling me is tomorrow I should just take the whole day off, not film anything on any of my channels, not even my vlog, and just enjoy the day with my husband and my dog, and come home and take a nap with him, go to the grocery store after brunch, take a nap with him, and just enjoy my day. So I'm thinking that that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, I will put obviously something up on the community tab, the vloggerinos group, and probably my Twitter if I'm going to take the day off, so I just want you guys to know that. Um, and I don't know in all honesty, you know, for so long, I vlogged every single day. And I'm still committed to vlogging every day. I want you guys to know that. Like, my goal is always to vlog every single day. Um, like, I don't want people to think, oh, Peter added a seventh channel, so now he's not going to vlog. I, I would... The way that I look at that is, I would not post something on that channel so that I could vlog, if that makes sense. Like, I'm more committed to this and to that new channel. Like, that new channel will happen when it happens. Um, it's more important for me to vlog and keep up on a daily basis. I think with taking time off after the accident, taking time off for the month after I had the pancreatitis, taking time off when PP passed away, taking time off here and there when I'm sick or I'm just tired or I want to spend the day with Alex and Boo or whatever, what I've realized is, I know this is going to sound so stupid, but like, it's okay for me to take a day off. Like, when I started the vlog, I was so committed to filming literally every single day. I didn't even care, but, but only doing it for like, I thought it would only last for like 30 days. And then six months down the road, I'm filming every single day. Like, I didn't even think this would last past 30 days of me doing it every day. You know, now here we are seven years in, and I think this is like the seventh year of me doing it. And I am literally trying every, so hard to post every single day. My vlogs have gotten shorter. This one's not too bad. I think this one, where am I at right now on this? Hold on a second. I'm about 52 minutes right now. This isn't too bad. But, I mean, my vlogs used to be an hour to an hour and a half, you know? So, um... I will say I enjoy sitting on the front porch vlogging more. Um... I'm just gonna say this, and I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. I don't mean it personally at all towards any person because several people have said it. It's in the vloggerinos group when I see it. I understand what you guys mean and I'm a sentimental person too. But when you guys mention that you miss the driving vlogs, that kind of hits a certain way for me. Um, you know, as many of you know that I've addressed in videos, I have made the choice not to drive right now. Um, I don't know when I will again. So that's not even anywhere on my radar anytime, anywhere in the near future. Um, and even if I was 100% approved tomorrow, I still wouldn't be making that choice. I just want you guys to know that. So it kind of hits a weird way when I read that comment, when people are like, oh, I really miss Peter's driving vlogs. I understand the sentimentality of it, but at the same time, um, and I've, kind of, I, I've, like, talked to my cousin, and I've talked to some friends of mine about, like, how they felt about it. And they're like, yeah, I, I, I saw that, and I kind of thought, like, you know, oh, that's a little insensitive. I understand that the people that are writing those comments mean it. Just like, oh, I miss these vlogs of Peter and Peter doing this and whatever. But, like, I'm not getting in the car. Um, those vlogs aren't happening again. So, I just, I don't know, like... I appreciate your sentimentality of missing my vlogs and me driving around, but that's not going to happen again. Um, so, 
I'm very comfortable on this front porch. I love logging here. It is harder for me to just talk for long periods of time, sitting here in a chair talking about my life. Um, I don't know, like when I was doing the driving vlogs, it was like I was just kind of like, you know, do -do 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 -do, telling stories here and there and whatever. Um, it does feel a little bit different. I prefer, personally, sitting in this chair and I'm not driving and I don't have any plans to drive. So, I don't know, those, feeling, those comments kind of like, hit a certain way for me when I see him. And I don't want anybody, like, please do not reach out to me and say you're sorry and, like, you didn't mean it that way. Hey, I appreciate... I know what you meant, okay? I, like I said, I'm a sentimental person, too. I didn't take them in any hard way or horrible way. I didn't take them that way at all. So please listen to me before you reach out to me. I did not mean... I did not take them in any kind of hard way. I'm just telling you, when I read those comments, how I respond to them internally, right? Like, I don't take them out on the person or I'm not mad at that person or anything like that, right? Like, I get where they're coming from. I'm just telling you that, like, when I read it as a person that is not in a car anymore because of the accident and choices that I made, to see that is just kind of like, okay, well, what would you have me do? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um... And maybe it's because I don't share so much with you of, like, what went into this decision and what goes through my head on a daily basis um, and the therapeutic work that I've done, and the conversations I've had with my sponsor and things like that and all the conversations I've had that have led up to me making that decision. But I just want you guys to know that that's obviously a really huge, deep issue for me. Um... It's not just about, like, missing driving around in a car. Um, so I just want to say that. Like, me even saying that out loud, like, it just, like, it just takes off. Like, you know what I mean? So just going forward, just, just know that. Um, but, like, I'm not mad at anybody for leaving that comment. I just want to say that before you reach out to me, because I know I'll probably wake up tomorrow to, like, Four Facebook messages, people be like, I didn't really mean anything by that. I'm so sorry. Listen, you do not have to apologize to me. I totally understand where you're coming from it. You know, I'm just, I'm just letting you know how I feel. So anyway, um, but like one of the things I've learned, I took a shower and did my hair and everything today and I'll look at it because I put this hat on. I was like, do my hair, make it look cute or wear a hat. I was like, well, when in doubt, wear a hat because you look cute. See how dark it's getting outside? Does it show up how dark it is out here with the, I mean, the house lights are on. It doesn't really show how dark it is on camera. I don't know why. It is so true that, like, certain colors and things show up differently on camera. They really do. Because I'll show things, and I'll be like, this is blue, and it'll show up purple and things like that. This jacket is actually showing up pretty accurately. Um, I think you guys have been such a huge help to me in realizing that it's okay for me to take off a day, if I need to, from filming a vlog or filming on any of my channels. Um, I think I don't give myself the permission enough to just hang out, take a nap with my husband. Like, I always feel like, and this is long before YouTube, I want you guys to know that. I've always been the person that, like I was talking about, like, how now I can sit down and binge watch shows only after everything is done. Like, if I had a bunch of stuff to do, I couldn't do that. And even before, like, before I was on YouTube, it was like, well, I could read this book and I could clean the house. I could vacuum, I could change the sheets, I could do laundry, I could do, the, I mean, I just, I really had a hard time, like, being still, you know, and just taking time to relax. Alex is very good for me with that, because he doesn't really have a problem doing that, and you guys have been so, so helpful to just say, hey, Peter, like, if you need to take a day, take a day, if you need to take a week, take a week, like, you totally understand, and I really appreciate that, because obviously one of my fears is that if I stop posting videos on here as regularly that people will be like, this isn't what I signed up for. I have no plan to go down to vlogging one or two days a week. My plan is to vlog every single day. With that plan, though, I also want to have the leniency, and I ha this is something I have to give myself. It's not about you guys at all. I have to give myself, I feel like this is going to stop any second. I don't know why. Hold on a second. Okay, we're at 29 minutes and 8 seconds. Hold on. I actually can't believe I have vlogged this long. Um... I have to give myself the leniency to realize that if I need to take a day or two off from vlogging, that that is totally okay. 
Because I know you guys are okay with it, you know? I mean, there's a few people out there that are like, I can't believe you're not vlogging tonight. And But then they like will say, like, LOL, I can go find the vlog from the past seven years and watch it again, or I haven't seen one, you know? And you guys are just so kind, and I just want to say I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm a believer that we learn and grow our own boundaries and our own expectations for our own life as we get older in life. And um, I can remember when I was doing this practicum, which is kind of like an internship. I was doing this practicum, a social work practicum, and my mentor at the time, who was a fantastic mentor to me for many years of my life, she said to me something about, like we had this to do and that to do and this to do, but she wasn't really giving us a lot of parameters with it. And I can remember like every day for like the first week, I would come in and I'd be like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And she'd say, well, I already gave you the instructions. You have to do this, you have to do this, and you have to do this. And it was like, start a group, write and develop the group, do this, do that. And like every day I go up to her and she, finally she sat me down. She was like kind of laughing. She was so creative and so smart. And she goes, listen, Peter, you need to learn to be self-motivated and self-taught. I am not going to be somebody <coughs> that's going to give you step-by-step -step directions, which I'm very good at one by 10, step one through 10 step-by-step -step directions of if you do these things and your job is complete for the day, I'm very good at that stuff. I've said for a long time that I probably would have been somebody very good to work in like a factory or warehouse, clock in, clock out, and do this and do this and do this all day long. Like I would have been very good at that. Um, and, and in all honesty, I really mean that. Um, I'm not good, like I, it's one of the reasons why I'm like either all in or all out with YouTube videos, you know? I know people will be like, Peter, you're pretty successful, like, you know, whatever. I mean, thank you. <laughs> but no, like, I do struggle with that sometimes because I either wake up and I'm like, God, I don't want to make any videos today at all, or I'm like, God, I can't wait to make 15 videos today, you know? Um, I'm still learning balance with this whole thing, and I'm still learning how to allow myself freedom to do it I don't know, I just have a hard time like running my own show, you know what I mean? Like, I'm still trying to figure it out. I mean, I make jokes, but I don't feel like any of you are my boss out there. I mean, you guys watching my videos is like, obviously, <laughs> you're reviewing my job performance, but, um, but I do feel like, when I make a video, like, on a review video, I think, is this something somebody's going to enjoy watching? Is this somebody people are going to want to know about? Is this something, like, that they're going to think is funny or whatever? I mean, I can tell you right now, before I even post a video, I can tell if it was, like, a stupid review, if it fall, fell dead, if nobody's going to care about it, or if it's going to go through the roof. Like, I know that before I post it. Um, on my Peter Does Stuff channel, I feel like I have such a liberty to make videos about whatever I wanted to. I mean, that was what the, that was the reason why I started that channel to begin with was just to have fun with it and be like an old school YouTube channel where I could just one day talk about movies, start a program where we're a group where we're all watching movies together and then the next day, you know, talk about OCD and the next day do a water talk challenge and that's what it's going to continue to be, you know? My Peterisms videos, I love those. And I make those videos for the people that reach out to me and say, I needed to hear this today. Even if I only get 200 views a video, you know, that's okay for me. If there's one person out there that something about that hit them that day, and sometimes it's me, you know, that needed to hear that. I know this is starting to get like really kind of like shadowy. I'm gonna get off here in just a second. You know, my drama channel, I love to have opinion and get heated. I love to have, I, I love right now being able to flip a fan and talk on the drama phone and have a lot of fun and be shady or sit out here with a Diet Coke and have a very serious long conversation. I'm loving both of those in the drama channel because I feel like both of those are very much sides of the same coin of what I want that channel to be. Um, my booktube channel, I always have a video on my list every single day and it's just always the last thought. And, and I need to spend more dedicated time. I said I was going to start posting two to three videos a week over there. I haven't done that yet. I've Got all kinds of videos. I have an unpopular opinion video I want to do over there. I have reviews of books that I haven't posted over there. I have to post the books for November that I haven't even. Um, did I do that already? No, I haven't. I need to, I think, did Mel and I already pick the book for November? And I just haven't posted it yet? No, because is it the 15th yet? Yeah, it's the 20th. What am I even thinking of? 
So we got to pick the book for November, and then I have to pick the Peter's Book Club book for November and announce that as well. I mean, I've got several videos to make over there, you know? All of my channels I love, but I always think about the person watching the video, whether it's one person or 10,000 people. I always think about the person sitting out there watching it. And like, not so much with my drama channel. I just get on there and kind of share my opinion. But with the other channels, I think about like the person out there with my vlog. It's like, there are so many people, Peter, that are that have been so loyal and so dedicated to watching your vlog on a daily basis. The red light started flashing, so the battery's about to die, so I have to get off here. But I always think about on my vlog, like, there are so many people that are dedicated and loyal to watching your vlog on a daily basis. Do it for them. You know? They've been so kind to you. In return, you know, pay it forward. Get the, get the vlog out there for them. For those people that want to fall asleep to it or watch it while they're making dinner or, you know, doing their makeup in the morning and stuff. So you guys inspire me to make videos. Like, when I say that stuff on my drama channel, like, it is not lost on me. Like, each person that subscribes to my channel is a real person. It is not lost to me on any of my channels. I'm so incredibly grateful for it. And I think about it before I film all my videos, you know? You guys can tell it's dark now, can't you? Look, the moon is out. Can you see it? You can't even see the moon. What is going on? It looks like it's like full sunshine outside. But it's not. You see the lights are on the street. Anyway, I don't even know if I have enough time to do my outro because the red light is flashing and it's been flashing. So I'm going to get off here now. I watched my shows last night too. I got caught up with... Um, I watched the end of Bachelor in Paradise. I watched the end of Invasion. And then I watched Love After Lockup. And then I watched Halloween, the movie. Uh, the sixth one. So... Um, I'm caught up, but I gotta watch seven, eight, and well, no, no, that's not true. I didn't finish it. So I've got like 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes left of Halloween six, and then I have to watch seven, eight, and nine this weekend to get caught up, because 10, 11, and 12 are next week, and then 13 is the of the week of Halloween. If I get a little bit behind, I can watch them all leading up to Halloween those past couple days, but. I'm halfway. I'm almost halfway through, um, and then I watched two episodes of Real Housewives of Miami because I'm trying to get caught up with all the seasons. I was like, even last night, like, how many episodes do I have to watch to get these to get these done in time? I think it starts um, November first, the new season of Real Housewives of Miami. So I want to be completely caught up. No way am I going to be able to do Potomac, too, but I wish I could. Anyway, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday. If you don't see me tomorrow, it's because I'm taking a break. I will either post it. Well, I, if I take a break, I will post on my community tab, on the Vlogarinos group, and also on my Twitter, the same thing across the board. So just in case you guys want to know. And I'll probably post that if I decide not to film any videos tomorrow by early... Uh, late afternoon, early evening. So by like four to six, sometime in there. Anyway, because um, by then I should have probably already made my decision. But I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday, a fant fantastic weekend. And remember to love one another. Remember to love yourself. If, you got, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Or maybe I won't see you tomorrow. Maybe I'll see you on Monday. Bye. Love you.